By the way, I love the clock. My name is Matt Holland. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Connected Behavioral Health. And we have a huge problem that we don't really ever talk about that actually is getting bigger every year. So 88 million people in the United States struggle with mental health and addiction issues at the cost of almost $231 billion a year. That's more than one in four of the population. And only two years ago, we were saying it was one in five. So not only do we have huge problems, but the system is feeling completely strained. With more people coming in the door, budgets are actually getting cut in half. So there's less time to see clients. And the federal government still wants you to track those outcomes and create better opportunities for the people coming in the door. So, it's not really hard to see the problem. What we're doing every single day, every single month, is showing that we are the solution to the problem. Most of us came from the system that's broken. So we built the system off of everything that we learned. It helps fill appointment slots that people don't show up for. It bridges gaps between the disparities in the system. But most importantly, it was built with thought from the ground up, not the top down. So it's pretty easy. You sit down with your provider, you decide what you want to track. It's modular based, so you can use one module. You could use nine modules. Then you head on your way, and we use push notifications to alert you to answer questions throughout the day. No different than Twitter, no different than Facebook. You take a few seconds, you answer those questions, and off you go. It's the same thing for the providers. Providers don't have time to look at huge graphs, huge charts, and everything else, because they're seeing patients back to back to back to back. So you can easily log into the system, and through the color coding, get an idea of who's struggling, and those struggling float to the top of the list. It's based off of evidence-based practices, it's HIPAA compliant, and it's bridgeable with EHRs and EMRs. So Connective is effectively taking treatment out of the office, in between appointments, and into people's lives. Now, how are we doing that? We launched earlier this year, and what we're doing is we're exhibiting, sponsoring, sending out print, and electronic media, but most importantly, we use a provider advocate and case-based selling model. Our providers are the greatest voice for the system. And in fact, they bring in almost two additional providers into the demo system per month. But how do we make a million dollars in that first year? It's actually not that hard. 750 clinicians using just 15 clients per month is over a million dollars. We already have 739 that we've talked to face-to-face -face that are sitting in our CRM. That one doesn't show up. So where are we headed? So the first thing, when we get our funding, because we bootstrapped till now, is we're bringing in two sales leads to get through that CRM. We're bringing in one marketer so that they can help bring even more people in, and we're gonna bring on two ops people. But the great thing is, we have an idea of where we're going. So by 2018, we'll have pushed out version three, which actually brings costs from $24 per year per client up to $96 per year per client. This is the amazing chain, the team that is gonna make this change happen. Our ask is simple. Partnerships, investors, other providers, give us an introduction. Because the reality is, it completely changes the story when one out of every four people is struggling. So it's time to change the way we provide care. It's time to be connected. So my, oh, sorry, first apologies. We, we uh, switched up the colors to the slide. Clearly, some of those didn't come out. Sorry, hey Matt, uh, over here, sorry. Um, so my question is, 
about your provider advocate is bringing on providers. So the providers are the people who are looking at that health portal, that dashboard. How are you bringing on the patients? What's that strategy look like? And is it a self-diagnosis strategy? Just talk me through what that looks like so that you're getting patients on the platform so that your providers are actually looking at content. So specifically, the providers are the ones who actually bring the patients on the platform because that's where the clog is in the system is with the patients currently using it. And in order to clear that huge bottleneck, we got to get those people out of the way first. So the providers are actually our first target and that's how we go through. One of the things that we didn't see is we're actually part of that wonderful pyramid. We're bringing on two universities and one major hospital on the West Coast. Um, and then those other 11 who are working towards the paying accounts fall into those categories. So the provider brings on whoever happens to be struggling, and they only pay for the ones they actually use. Um, yeah, I, actually, she was asking very much what I was thinking, that I didn't understand how people would be brought into it as like a patient and uh, what your process was outreaching them. So you kind of answered that, but um, what, what do you do about like showing your value to those patients? Like how would they, like why do they want to use this? I, I wasn't quite clear. The reality that. is this, nobody wants to be an addict. Nobody wants to strangle, struggle. Not, they don't want to strangle either, but they also, don't, they also don't want to struggle on a daily basis with anxiety and depression or thinking about going into one of those shops or thinking about having that job and using that app and being stressed out to here. Nobody wants that. People want to be better connected. People want to think about how they're doing on a daily basis. They want to be mindful of things. They want to get better. Um, so uh, the question I have is focused on what's the... is. In my mind, if, if I'm struggling with something, um, I, this probably sounds like a cry for help, it's not, I promise. But, but I, I feel like generally I would say that I'm doing better than I normally am if there really is a problem. And so my question is, is if I'm just getting a, a happy face scale and I'm just putting things, wouldn't you think that people would tend to put happier things and you'd have less of those red marks? How do, how do you deal with that kind so of So that's why we started with the clinicians, because the clinicians know their patients the best. And so the whole idea is, yes, you know, somebody is an addict who's probably court mandated to go to these things is probably like, yeah, I'm not using any drugs at all. But maybe they are, because it's a hard thing to break from. So the reality is, is that they have to start answering the questions. We don't use the happy faces for a reason, because your brain actually reads the questions as you go through it, even if you've answered 20 times, which works off of neuroplasticity which changes the function in the brain and forms new highways, new thought processes. So over time, the idea is they'll answer more honestly. And most therapists will be like, okay, you left last week, you were a mess, and you're telling me you were green that whole next week, gonna have to call shenanigans. But until we actually figure out a way to actually hook into the brain and change the way it functions, this is what we have, mindfulness. Uh, as far as insurance providers, have you approached any uh, that might be willing to subsidize any of the costs as part of patient care? So the way it works, and you know, it's an intricate system, but actually you bill for most of the system using current case management codes. I worked in behavioral health for 16 and a half years. I traveled on business for the federal government and things like that. So not only that, but when you fill those slots that are open in your schedule because people called or didn't come in and didn't call, you're actually generating more revenue with the system. Have you looked into, um, to your left, 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 left there, yes, that's right. I'm blinded by these okay. Have you looked into using like uh, more abstract questions or uh, calculating the time that it takes for someone to respond to look to see if how truthful they are being on the uh, questionnaire? Oh, we have. We have an AI design for when we push out version three that actually will use part of NASA's emotional recognition video software. So to actually be able to tell as you answer questions, we call it having your best support in your pocket. We have, we've had a lot of people, and it's gonna go quickly, pull a frame from the uh, employee stuff. And so we're talking to a lot of people in regards to that. Thank you. Thank you.